What do you do on a hot summer day? You go to the beach, right? And, and, and why do you go to the beach? To measure evaporation. That's new for you, right? That's not, that's not what you taught in school. But this is what you have learned. This is the water cycle, where water is evaporating from the oceans, it condensates and falls as rain or snow on the land. And through the rivers, it's discharged back to the oceans. But this is not true. Actually, 60% of the water that's in the, uh, in the air is not evaporated from the oceans, it's evaporated from the land. The image you see behind me is a global image where in the locations in red, the water is 100% coming from water vapor from land. So, and only the locations in blue is where water is coming from the oceans. So from where can water evaporate on land? Actually, you have four types. The first one is the water from open water bodies. A bigger one is the water that plants use to grow. It's transpiration. Water can also evaporate from the bare soil. And lastly, it can also evaporate from any wet surface. After a rainfall event, the entire surface is wet. For example, this, this tree with the water on it. And from there, it can evaporate. So this is the story your teacher should have teach you. Water is evaporating from the oceans, but in most locations, even from the land. So if evaporation is so important, why is it so important? Because it's the source of our water, and not as this stone indicates that this small pool is the source of the River Rhine. It's the evaporation is the source of our water. And more importantly, it's also important for our food. No water, no food. Plants need water to grow. And these plants provide our vegetables and our grains that we eat. But also our cattle is also eating uh, the vegetables and the grains. And in the end, we also eat that. So it is really important to avoid droughts. Otherwise, our food is in danger. Can you imagine that without having enough knowledge about evaporation, that our food is in danger? Also, farmers should have knowledge about evaporation. If they want to design an irrigation system, they should know how much water is used by the plants to grow, and they should minimize the water that is lost due to other types of evaporation. And this is maybe a completely different example which you did not expect. But evaporation can also cause floods. This is a picture of the village Wilnes in 2003, where during a severe drought, there was not enough water to, uh, to absorb in the dike. And therefore, the dike lost its stability and it collapsed. As a result, an entire neighborhood was flooded with water. So these are all extremes, but also in general, it's important to know more about evaporation, to be prepared for changes in our system, like climate change or land use, change, land use changes. We should try really focus to keep our feet dry. So if evaporation is so important, why don't we know about it? Because it's, evaporation is invisible, we don't see it. And things we don't see, we tend to ignore. And besides, evaporation is also a really complex and difficult process to measure. And that results in a fact that is also quite costly. And these three reasons are, the, are responsible for the fact that there are only a few measurements of evaporation in the world. So back to our beach, where we measure evaporation. 
As you know, the sun will heat the air, but in this case, the part of the radiation from the sun is also used to evaporate water from the ocean or from the sea. So less, water, less energy is available to, uh, to heat up the air. That's why it's cooler near the beach, and that's the reason you go there during a hot summer day. And this is also the reason why, when you're, for example, wearing a wet T-shirt, you will sense a colder temperature than when you're wearing a dry T-shirt. And this principle, we are also, also used to measure evaporation. You measure the air temperature and the temperature of a wet T-shirt. This is some pictures of our fieldwork, where we have a really big tower, 50 meters. And from the tower, we fix two fiber, glass fiber optic cables. And with that glass fiber optic cable, we can measure temperature along that cable. Every 12 and a half centimeter, we get a temperature value. One cable is measuring the air temperature in a profile, and the other, the other cable we make wet, comparable, comparable to the wet t-shirt. And with this principle, we can determine the amount of evaporation, in this case, from a forest. And this is the way we try to hope to understand evaporation better, to avoid floods, droughts, to be prepared on climate change and land use changes, but most, more importantly, to secure our food. And as a reference for you, did you know that worldwide there are 67,000 official rain stations, while there are only 439 evaporation stations in the world? So don't you think we should measure a bit more evaporation in the world? Thank you. <laughs>